Hey guys, happy Friday. Thought I would do another video trying out YouTube and all. So I've been getting um, a lot of comments on Facebook, uh, usually from people just starting out, learning a bit more about paganism and, and Wicca and things like that and wondering where they should start. So I get this question a lot. So I thought I would do a um, book review of one of my favorite beginner books, um, which is Wicca, A Guide for the Solitary Practitioner by Scott Cunningham. Um, I've recommended this book to, you know, several people that have messaged me on my Instagram and Facebook and just thought I would go ahead and go over it a little bit with you guys. Um, so let me grab it over here. So this is the book. I got this um, a few years ago, many years ago actually. Um, I didn't have it when I was starting out, when I was like 13, um, but I found it much later and I wish I had this book when I was starting out because it really goes over everything in easy to understand terms. It's um, a great beginning point, a great launching off point um, to getting you started. So it's pretty good. I'm just going to have some tea. It is cold outside today. Oh my god. It's like... Uh, negative one I think in Chicago it's oh but anyway hopefully that'll warm me up so this book so um he starts out with um talking about Wicca and shamanism and the connection and how a lot of people you know think that Wicca comes directly from pagan beliefs um from you know hundreds of years ago and that's not necessarily you know true um, and he kind of does a good job of explaining that how Wicca is a new religion um, that kind of draws upon ideas and thoughts and some rituals and stuff like that from that time. But it's not like there has been this continuous line um, of knowledge um, that has continued into today. Um, so yeah, he does a good job of explaining that. And um, and then, yeah, I kind of like how he kind of begins with theory, like he talks about what is shamanism, um, what can it teach us, and things like that. Um, then he goes into the deities, um, and he specifically just speaks about like the god and the goddess, and, um, and kind of explains them, and I got um, a quote here about the goddess that I really liked um, that he wrote. He said, um, the goddess has been depicted as a huntress running with her hounds, a celestial deity striding across the sky with stardust falling from her heels, the eternal mother heavy with child, the weaver of our lives and deaths, a crone walking by waning moonlight seeking out the weak and forlorn, and as many other beings. But no matter how we envision her, she is omnipresent, changeless, eternal. I just thought that was really beautiful. and. Uh, for me personally, when I was younger, um, one of the things that drew me towards paganism was the strong female representation within the religion, um, which is, you know, rare to find, especially in um, the main monotheistic religions. Like, a lot of people I grew up kind of Christian, but like, it wasn't really serious um, within my family. Um, but still, you know, you're told as a woman growing up, that you know you're a naturally sinful and um, should be submissive to to man within you know this religious con construct and you know that didn't sit right with me <laughs> and I don't think it sits right with a lot of women and just finding something where it's like there's a god and a goddess uh, male energies and female energies and they are equal and powerful and just having that like strong female powerful figure to to look up to was really powerful when like going through adolescence and I'm I'm always surprised at how kind of counterculture um, pagan religions are still because I think if people just read more about it a lot more people especially women would be drawn towards the idea of um, praying to a goddess you know it, it makes sense and it makes sense having that equality between the god and the goddess. So that really connected with me. 
um, and I like he does a good job of explaining that. Um, and then he goes on to some kind of like practical stuff, like there's information on, on tools here, um, and how to raise power through like music or dance or gestures, which is great. And then from there, you know, how do you how do you perform a ritual? And he gives you some, you know, rough ideas on like how to how to do it, but you know, he keeps on going back to like make it your own and um, do what you need to do that's best that what feels right, you know? And you know, even with the tools, like you don't need any tools. Like you yourself and nature is enough. Um, and I like how it keeps on, you know, coming back to that. Cause a lot of people, when they start out, they think, oh my God, I need to buy all this stuff. And it's like, you don't, I still don't have a lot of the common tools that people use because you don't need them. Um, maybe I'll get them eventually, but, um, but it's not necessary. And I like how he, you know, talks about that. Um, he goes over the, um, the Sabbaths, the eight days of power. Um, which are great. I love learning about the Sabbaths. I'm going to probably do like a Sabbath video series coming up. I'll plan on it. We'll see. Um, and yeah, and then it's just a great intro. And then the second half of the book is his kind of like book of shadows. So he kind of just has more kind of information that he uses. Um, how do you cast a circle? Um, what about having a feast after a ritual and, and things like that? And um, yeah. So how to consecrate tools, um, a little bit more about ritual, um, different prayers you can do if you'd like. Um, oh, and there's even recipes in here, which is fun. I haven't tried any of these yet, but um, this one for crescent cakes looks really good. Normally I'm pretty boring and just have like some crackers after ritual, but <laughs> but I'm, I'll do some more effort. Um, there's um, correspondences in the back, like um, herb correspondences, crystal correspondences, things like that. Um, oh, and there's there's also there's like um, symbols um, and. There's even a, a tiny section on runes, not not too in depth, but then again, this is an in introduction book, so it's a really great great starter. There's oh, there's even like definitions in the back, and then there's like a suggested reading list in the back. So it's a really good way to get started. Um, and I definitely wish I had had this when I had started. It would have made things a lot more clear when I was starting out. It was. I was just like looking at websites, found a bunch of weird stuff, <laughs> as you do. And when you're like 13, you don't know what to believe. So, so I wish I had this book. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Um, I'm gonna probably do a couple other um, intro book series. Um, he does have another book that's like a, a companion book, um, Living Wicca, and then um, I'll probably do one on this book, which is um, one of the more popular starter books as well. So um, I'll probably make this a series and, you know, kind of talk about different books that are good to start out. And, and again, these are, these are not that comprehensive. They just kind of give you the base, the foundation, the theory upon which you can build and keep on learning. So yeah, well, have a good day. It's Friday. Keep warm if you're in a cold climate like me because, whew, it is cold out there. Looking forward to spring. <laughs> Can't come soon enough. Okay, bye guys.